Sooner Football fans. This is your Sooner Football Fan Podcast. you got Terry and Rob here. Boomer Rob. Boomer Terry. And Caleb is on the DL tonight uh, delivering ICs to the great state of Oklahoma at a late hour, so he won't be joining us tonight. But we are, Rob and I are joining you, and we are at the Podcast Palace in a cold, blistery, rainy Tuesday night, Wednesday morning when you're listening to this. Where we are not affiliated with the University of Oklahoma. But we do have some eligibility left. So, <laughs> uh, let's get to it. First off, um, do us a favor. If you're listening to us on iTunes, on your Apple, um, I, what is it, uh, iPhone? I, I don't use uh, I, Apple products. So Yeah, yeah, iPhone. I listen to <laughs> on the iPhone. Yeah, so um, one thing about Apple uh, is is that, you know, if you rate us on there and make a comment, it moves us up the playlist. So do us a favor and give us a big rate on there, you know, a good rating. A, a, a five plus is what we expect. Of course, if you don't think that, then leave whatever but we think we're pretty good <laughs> so um but uh subscribe to it on google play spotify itunes um subscribe to our youtube channel uh we have a video that comes out most thursday nights we've had some technical difficulty these last couple of weeks haven't had one out but we're planning on getting another one out um and also make sure if you're going to be out of town this weekend no sooner game you want to do something go check out dan uh, Donnelly's tailgateconnect.com. Maybe you can find a tailgate to go attend or close around where you're at. Uh, Dan has reached out to tailgates all over the country and he can set you up to enjoy um, some great tailgating from some of the greatest, just some of the best tailgates in the country. But go to www.tailgateconnect.com for that. Also, um, if you live in an area where there's not a lot of Sooner fans or you don't know where the Sooner fans hang out, there's a lot of Sooner fans everywhere. Slap my face for saying something like that. But um, you don't know where they're at, you can get the app called Team Bar Finder uh, on, in the Apple Store or the Google Play Store or go online to www.teambarfinder.com. Dave Lamb's company, he's a Sooner fan as well as Dan with Tailgate Connect, but um, has an app that will send you to where the closest bar is that has a Sooner watch party. Um, if you have a watch party, but you want to you know, invite more people to it, go to Team Bar Finder, add it to it, invite people to come, and they will find you. So Have a bunch of big Sooners there. Yes, yes, and it does work. There were people posted this weekend that were in Vegas, and they used it to find a Sooner watch party in Las Vegas. So can't beat that. Absolutely but, not. I mean – so much better watching a game with other yeah. Sooners than it is, you know. <laughs> you know, we're not we're not all like Caleb and, and Eli, you know, my neighbor who watched it from the hotel room because they, you know, the OU Texas game because they stayed out too late. <laughs> Most people like to enjoy the company of other folks. Um, but uh, Sooners are still uh, licking their wombs. Wombs? Uh, wounds. <laughs> Good Lord, we just need to start over, don't we? <laughs> I can't believe you said that. Don't stop it. No, we don't stop it. Oh, uh, this is what happens when you're trying to do three things at one time. Uh, licking their wounds, wounds from the butt kicking given to us by the Kansas State Wildcats. What was the final score? 58 to 52. 100 to uh, 12, yeah, 58 to 51, something stupid. 48 to 41. 48 to 41. It doesn't matter. So um, let's let's start with that. Um, Monday was just bombarded uh, the um, social media, Twitter, with all the responses, the reporters, with their tape of the teleconference that the Big 12 officials gave. Oh, they uh, finally gave one. No, yeah, it was a, it was a, they were on the Big Twelve teleconference. And was right. it? We didn't do anything wrong. Basically, they're not going to admit to doing anything wrong. Well, yeah. I mean, basically, it was rule one is what they looked at. The other rule they can't look at because that rule is not, um, oh, uh, it's not re- determined by replay. Well, sadly enough, it's not the first or second time a. Bad call has cost the Sooners a game. 
Yeah, I mean, but th- their whole reasoning behind it, okay, and I'm no expert, believe me. Um, Rob probably is, but my understanding from all the stuff I looked at it is what was reviewable was did he touch it, okay? That's reviewable, and he did touch it. What they can't review was was he blocked into it. It doesn't matter whether he was, but that's not reviewable. What the you know is whether or not that because that's a penalty, and especially a block in the back. Um, and they said that they made the right call. So, um, everybody in the world knows they didn't. And like Rob just said, you know we had you know it, it, I watched you know JY broke it down on on trench warfare, and he said I guarantee if that had been an Oklahoma player block him in the back. Um, we'd have dang sure got a foul on it. Oh, for <laughs> sure we would have. <laughs> so, but you know, some Terry, I'm not the. I mean, yeah, it hurt. It felt like somebody stabbed me in the heart or something. But I'm the day after the game. I'm ready to move on. I don't yeah, want to. You know, you know. I mean, yeah. It you know the old story. We talked about it before. It, it shouldn't have ever come down to that. Blah blah blah. But it did. Um, but it's done now. I mean, we're 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 stabbing a dead horse. Uh, that doesn't really need to be talked about anymore. I mean, what's done is done. It's a loss. It will go down and loss. The Big 12 refs aren't going to say otherwise. So we got to move forward. The way Oklahoma looked, Rob, you've watched it again. I can't watch a game like that again. I have not watched it again. I deleted the recording. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I watched some highlights because I was pretty critical of Jalen. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to be critical of him because he's a great, great football player. He's going to be a great pro football player. I, I, honestly, I just don't know why I feel like he's – as soon as he – as soon as that first read is covered, it's like it's oh, – I'm tucking and running, and there's no other options. And I know that some of, some of the time he was just running for his life yeah. because we weren't blocking them properly, but – you know, he's a good quarterback. And and you know what? We if the defense had continued to play like it was playing, we could have won a national title with him behind center. Oh yeah. And what happened to the defense? I mean, I, I, I don't get this. A defense that has bettered itself by more than fifty percent in every category in, in college football. Um you know, better with the eye test. We talk about it. Sooner fans talk about it. Look at how they're hustling to the ball. Look at how they're doing this. Look at what Alex Grinch is doing where he's putting us in situations to where we went. And then <laughs> Saturday. Yeah, but Terry. What happened? I'm telling you, I, I agree. I mean, they had eight or seven, eight or six, maybe six. Six drives where they just cut cut us up and went down and scored touchdowns. But – I'm telling you, it was more in the coaching than it was the players because, well, I don't know. I, I'm just a fan. Obviously, I'm not a coach or any kind of professional <laughs> journalist or anything like that. But I don't know how to explain it, but they just were in the right spot at the right time every play. Yeah, and, and see, and that, that leads me to wonder, is Alex Grinch that predictable that they watched his game films and went – Okay, when we get into this, he is more apt to do this. You know what I That's mean? That's what it looked like. And, and they called it right and, every time. You know, because I, I'm just saying, you, you can't get lucky that many times of calling. You know, every time we stunted to the left, they were veering to the right. Yeah. You can't get that lucky every single time. And they were running where guys weren't. And it was almost like. It was Alex Grinch just became predictable, and they said, okay, if we line up in this and it's second down, he's going to do this. Right. And so we're going to run this, and if it keeps working, we're just going to keep doing it. And it, it just did. kept on working. <laughs> <laughs> kept on working. And then I think the players, I mean, you know, listening to Grinch and stuff, he took all the responsibility. But, you know, and, and even um, uh, Lincoln Riley said, you know, he, you know, they panicked a little bit. The players did. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, they hadn't been put in this situation all year long, and all of a sudden they're just getting manhandled 
like they were getting manhandled last year, just getting, you know, it was it was like a spaghetti strainer. They were just running through us. Yeah, and so the good thing about what you and I do is we don't have to be politically correct. Nope. I mean, we don't have to do coach speak and say, well, you know, they did this. We can tell it exactly the way we see it, which is, you know, obviously a, a non-professional right. capacity. <laughs> Uh, we're just fans, but uh, you know, I honestly, I have no explanation. Yeah, it, it's it's frustrating, you know. And and everybody came out during the game, after the game, you know. They should have benched, you know, uh, Jalen. Um, you know, start putting some of those linemen on the bench, offensive linemen on the bench, and start playing the young guys. Okay, they are the young guys, guys. That's hmm. the best of the young guys we got. So. Um, you know, all the fan reactions, which is what we're supposed to do as fans, and none of them are wrong. I'm I'm not pointing blame at any no, of them because no. believe me, at some point in time in the game, I said the same thing. You know, I never said pull Jalen Hurts because that's that wasn't an option. Silly, that, yeah. you're not that si- you're not that silly. Okay. But you know, I'm 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 sitting there just like you know. I know Rob. Rob wasn't here, which that's part of the issue that we have with this game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we're. I know Rob, and when we were watching the Texas game, when Jalen would drop back, we would both almost at the same time go, throw it. He's open. Right, throw it. Right. <laughs> so, um, and at the same time, oh, my God, well, one of you guys block somebody. He doesn't have any time. Yeah, Make a tackle for crying out loud. Oh, you caught it again. You let him catch it again. I mean, all those things that everybody says we say well, during the game. Yeah. And, Fourth and six, right? <laughs> And our corners are 10 yards off the ball. Again. I'm like, they're fourth and sixth, and you're 10 yards. He runs a little six-yard re- curl route, first down. Boom. No. I'm like, listen, I know I'm not getting paid to make the big calls, but from my TV I can see that. <laughs> so I don't know. You know, I, I, again, you know, th- there's got to be something there, a tendency that the coaches look at that say this is why we need to be – you know, I don't, I don't understand – you know, when we back them up um, with the the penalty, um, it, you know, when they drove basically the length of the field and it was first and 25, and then it was, you know, second and 13 or second and 18, and then second and third and 13, and they get a freaking first down. Yeah. I mean, you can't give that stuff up, and it just feels like Oklahoma reverted back defensively um, to that defense that may you know maybe kansas that you know this guy like we said the coach he you know yeah he coached in you know quote small college football but he won champions not just back to back to back to back to back back. yeah i mean and beat the hell i watched them play a couple of times on espn they were no slouches they beat kansas state they beat kansas they beat you know coming so how did kansas state playing like that Win, uh, lose two games before us <laughs> to to Oklahoma State and only score fourteen points. Yeah, or twelve points. And Oklahoma State's got a terrible defense. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, and it's a deal, you know. And we say this, you know, everybody we get everybody's best. You know, everybody wants to knock off the big dog, and you know that only goes so far. You know what I mean? You're the big dog. You walk in. With the big dog attitude, not just the attitude. You walk in there with the big dog mentality and do your thing. And it just didn't seem like Oklahoma was ready to do their thing. They just didn't go in and take care of business. <laughs> and not simple. You remember back, you know, in, in Bob Stoops, the last couple of years, three or four years, you and I would complain, you know, way before we had this podcast. It seemed like Bob Stoops' defenses and Bob Stoops' teams there for a while thought they could walk out and throw their helmet out on mm-hmm. the 50-yard line and people were going to fall down. Oh, my God, it's Oklahoma. We can't play these guys. Right. Well, that's what they should do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they should apologize to the fans for even thinking they could right. stay on the same field as us. Right. And I don't know. Do you think maybe Oklahoma did a little bit of that? They got a little bit of full of themselves? They might have. You know, Absolutely. Going, hey, have. Look at what we've been doing to everybody. We're going to walk in here. Yeah. You know, offensively, we're one number one in everything. Defensively, we're ranked high in everything. So, yeah, get rid of this butt kick and we're going to that's, that's coaching. I mm-hmm. mean, you, the coaches have got to get you mentally prepared. And I was reading uh, James Hell's deal on TFB today, and, you know, they, they were outside the locker room, and they said that they could hear after the game, and they could hear Lincoln just – they couldn't hear what he was saying – 
<laughs> but he was ripping them, and there was nobody else talking. Well, I mean, I, how can you blame him? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, you know, and Rob, this is something that I said that is what I'm going to be interested in. Remember when he got the job, I talked about, you know, yeah, we all know he's a great offensive mind, but can he be the head coach? These are the things that he has to be able to do to overcome. We can't keep dropping games to people that we should not. In three years, we've lost three games mm-hmm. that we should not have been. Did you know that Kansas State is the that's the most points a unranked team has scored against Oklahoma since the AP poll started? Wow. That's horrible. It is, but, <laughs> I mean, look at it in this way. In those three years, we've lost one game. I, I know. But we got at some point in time, he's got to get over that hump. And I know that's saying a lot. I mean, are we being <laughs> listen, Lincoln? <laughs> you got to go out and be undefeated every year, sir, or or it's win, the highway. Just win your lose your first <laughs> damn game and don't lose it. <laughs> get it out of the way. Go throw an egg at the beginning of the year because you know. And, and right now, and rightfully so, I'm sitting here looking at the Big Twelve, going, "Okay, is the Big Twelve any good?" Because we're just now eating each other up. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's beating everybody. Except for Baylor, okay, and you look at the top twenty, you know, the top ten. Oklahoma's ranked number ten. Yeah, the polls don't come out. the The playoff polls don't start happening until next week. Next week, but you know, and every year, yeah, we have the last two years. We've overcame the loss, but we had a strong non conference schedule or a strong non conference game, um, but. You know, let's say Utah is seven and one. We'll eventually pass Utah. I think Utah has to play Oregon. I think um, Georgia. Um, Georgia might lose another game. Well, Oregon might lose another they game. They might. But let's talk about how many undefeated teams do you can you remember from last year? Just one. Just one. Yeah. So it's not really easy to do. No, it's not easy to do. You know. Um. But it wouldn't be such a bad – I mean, two years ago, it was Iowa State. Last year, it was Texas. Yeah. And everybody knows last year that Oklahoma was better than Texas. Okay? And we proved it in the Big 12 right, title game. Right. And came out and manhandled them in the Big 12 title game. And it's like – Lincoln's got to put together, and I think he's on the path to doing it, and, and we've said it all along. One of the reasons why I wasn't drinking the Kool Aid was because it's the same guys, and we see it was the same guys when yeah, they got yeah. their back to the corner and they got kind of slapped around a little bit. You know, they started making, and, and the coaches said there were mental mistakes. They didn't lay it on the kids. They said, you know, what we have to do as coaches is to get them to overcome those mental, put them in a situation where that mental mistake's not going to happen again. Yeah, I, and and you know, we gave it forty eight points, and they they cut us up pretty bad. But it still looked uh, like a better defense than what we put on the field in any one game last year. Yeah, I mean that's true. I mean, at least there there were, was, I guess maybe it's because there was still effort. I don't know why yeah. really, but I mean they but they were just getting beat, and it was it was you know dumb penalties. You know the the you know on third downs that that killed us. Yep. You know, and then, and let's flip it over to the offensive side of the ball. I mean, we kicked four field goals. Two of them, I question whether or not we should have kicked them or not. Yeah. Um, and because when it's third and or fourth and two, and you've got Jalen Hurts and an offense that's averaging nine yards a carry or yeah, nine why, yards why a play, kick, yeah. why, why do we ever kick? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, you're right. You know who? I don't know where at high school. I mean, coach that's would, smart football. Yeah, but that gummit when you got. Kennedy Brooks and you got Link, you know, I don't know. That, that's a whole nother story. We'll get into that in a little bit too about the, the, but I mean, why does Oklahoma even kick the ball? I mean, I mean, when you're averaging what the, I don't know where, well, I need to do some research and you know, there was that high school coach. Only time he ever kicked the ball was on kickoffs. He never uh-huh. punted, never kicked extra points, never cooked. Um, uh, I mean, he kicked extra points, never kicked field goals. He just played the uh, just play, yeah, played the you know played hey, the odds. we're I, I we're averaging five yards a carry, whatever they're averaging. We should get five yards if we're under there, and he just doesn't go. He doesn't punt it. I, I agree. No with matter your, where he's I at. agree with the sentiment, <laughs> but but really, it's just smart football to kick. Right. It, it is, 
And you know that. I'm yeah. not telling you anything you don't know. But then again, I also agree with that sentiment when it's fourth and two and we're on their 35, 40 yeah. yard line. We need to go for that. Yeah, go for it. Or, you know, get get the, get the two yards, fresh set of downs. You know, I, I don't care if we, if we go four, four plays ever, you know. <laughs> Dude, that was a laser. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. We're watching the uh, World Series and the, the Washington is up one to nothing right now. But, you know, this is the day after so y'all probably already know who won it so yeah. we won't tell you um spoiler alert <laughs> oh, wait. so speaking of what you know off the, the okay I, apparently we should have been watching the world series the other night did you see what happened the other night uh well it depends on what you're talking about uh, the young ladies behind the backstop oh. <laughs> <laughs> i heard about that <laughs> funny though i haven't seen any you know there was stuff on twitter and, was there? yeah apparently it was a Ladies who have a internet company, and it was actually, I think they it was for breast cancer awareness or something like that. That and they were wearing their company shirts, and they stood up and. They're uh, also models too, right? Yes, I've seen. <laughs> well, they're apparently they're Twitter or maybe I don't know, whatever they're yeah they're, social doubled or tripled. Yeah, them. yeah, it, it was it, it was so, smart. It was impressive for what I'm told. I haven't seen any pictures. Wink, wink. No, <laughs> but yeah, they just stood up and boobies for baseball. How do you feel about that, Rob? Uh, <laughs> did I say I have to? It didn't have to be PC because yeah. I'm kind of a fan <laughs> of, of, of boobies for yeah, baseball. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't want to offend anybody, but uh, really, I don't care. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was the thing, you know, again, how times have changed. Remember back in our day, it was, what's her name, the kissing bandit that would, the big boob woman who'd run out on, on the field in the middle of a game and kiss a player, and they'd arrest her. Oh, yeah. You remember who I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> that was all, we, we didn't have people in our day behind the backstop flashing boobs. <laughs> it was just a crazy lady chasing down baseball players to kiss them. What was her name? She was something the kissing bandit. I don't know. But we had Elvira. No, Elvira. she went kissing folks. She was the Coors Light witch. But anyway, so yeah. Coors Light? I don't know. Well, she did the Coors Light commercials, but yeah. Was she on the Adams family or what was No, that? she was just a I think she had her own T V show oh, where okay. she showed spooky movies. Okay. You know, old. And uh And it's all tied up. And and she's old now too, but she's still is she, she? Yeah, she's you know she's still on the. Am I have to Google on her the, on up on the radar gun a little bit? So is she in the high, is she in the high nineties? Uh, no, oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> for her age though, she's in the high nineties. Hey, I would Siri, say. what does Elvira look like now? Oh God, <laughs> we'll see what Siri says. Her name is Cassandra Peterson. Uh, she's an American act- actress best known for her portrayal of the horror hostess character Elvira. Mistress of the Dark. She gained fame on the LA TV station, something, something, wearing and revealing black, blah, blah, blah. Well, pull up the picture, Siri. <laughs> Good grief. I can't pull the picture up. So You can't pull the picture up. She was born in 1951, just FYI. Yeah, so she's... Geez. 68. Dang. 68. Born in Manhattan. She's married to a guy named Mark. So Is, is he Mark Master of the Dark? <laughs> <laughs> I, that's their private information Mark, and i'm gonna Mark, not ask. Mark mister of the dark she's the mistress of the dark he's, he's the mister of the dark okay yeah she's she's not she's not in the high 90s any longer no that's for but sure. but for, you know for her age group she doesn't look 68 i'll no, give her that no but yeah so anyway uh we digress we mm, start watching baseball <clears throat> where did they even come from i don't even remember i was just remembered that the the booby girls oh yeah yeah and then i was talking about the kissing bandit siri up the kissing bandit what was oh, her name okay hey siri who's the kissing bandit yeah see what she said morgana morgana roberts <laughs> she's born in 1954 yeah. by the way morgana the kissing bandit yep Let's see if I can find a picture of her. <laughs> I bet she looked like she would was worn out back in those days. So I'm <laughs> oh, sure. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well. So I'm sure she. Uh, 
hasn't aged well. Not that I've aged well. I've aged like a rotten barrel of beer, but. Siri's not trying to show me a picture. Do you have pictures blocked? Maybe. I don't know. (laughs) Let's see. But I can tell you this. She famously rushed the field on many occasions and kissed Nolan Ryan, Pete Rose, Johnny Bench, George Brett, Steve Garvey, Cal Ripken Jr. And she has been described as baseball's unofficial mascot and the Grand Dame of the baseball. Grand Dame. Yep. She also yeah. crashed National, National Basketball Associ- Association games where she kissed Kareem Abdul Jabbar. She was a little bit. She was. She was a little bit top heavy when she would run. She didn't. <laughs> she wasn't graceful when she ran. Uh, okay. Do, do you not re- do you not remember her? I guess I don't. Oh my god! We're, you know I am quite a bit younger than you. So no, you're not. That. <laughs> I'm like you're 15 not. years younger than you. No, Morgana, <laughs> the kissing bandit. She would come. She was dressed like Dolly Parton. She had big blonde hair. And when she would come, I hate Siri. Siri, show me a picture of Morgana. <laughs> hey Siri, show me a picture of Morgana. Let's see if that works. I don't think it will. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't have any in my library. Oh, wait, here she is. I think. Anyway. <clears throat> okay, yeah, she's yeah, she's maybe she's like a knuckleballer now. <laughs> uh and if you don't know what that is, we cannot be we friends. Cannot, yeah. So all right, here you go, Terry. Bam, there you are. Uh, no. All right. What do you think? No. She's in the low fifties. <laughs> low to mid fifties. But is there a picture of her back in the day oh, running? Okay. Well, let me see. How do I get off of this? I don't even know. I don't know. Rob. Rob. <laughs> I'm surprised Rob can. How do you? I use, can't. How do you I use can't. Marco Polo? I mean, <laughs> well, that was pretty easy. <laughs> but uh, Rob, the only person who can't Google and Siri that I. I mean, my I have granddaughters that are you know <laughs> seven years old. I don't know how you get the pictures. <laughs> Of her. <laughs> wait a minute. Early life. Early in life. Early life. No, there's no pictures. There's no pictures. Okay. Yeah, it's coming. Well, oh, wait. Well, 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 somebody uh, tomorrow on Twitter, it's at Big Rob, uh, send him a picture of Morgana, the kissing bandit, <laughs> please. All right. Let me go to the Googles. <laughs> oh, no, God. He's, he's <laughs> going to Google Morgana, the kissing bandit. Oh, I don't think I should k- click that. <laughs> What'd you just pull up? I don't know, but it's gone now. Oh, that's Sooner Sports. They're not going to know. Where's Google? I don't even know where Google's at. Oh, here it is. Okay, there it is. All right. What's her, what was her last name? Kissing Bandit Morgana. Another Kissing Bandit. There we go. And when, when it comes up. Not Morgana. <laughs> God. Morgana. 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 Okay, sorry. Morgana Boots. Oh my gosh! I hate this phone. So I don't think it's the phone, Rob. So we'll move on. We'll move. Did right. you see what happened last night? I had a moment of grace and love in my life. Yeah, what happened? Steelers won. Oh, they did. Yeah, they beat the Dolphins, but hey, a win's a win. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they almost didn't beat them. Right? Yeah, well, I, I, I holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> Rob just found Morgana the Listen, Kissing Bandit. <laughs> you got to quit uh, underestimating the <laughs> what? That can't be real. <laughs> I believe it. Well, who wouldn't? I mean, who wouldn't let that kiss him? Who is this? Um, all right, she's kissing a player here. I can't tell who it is, but he's not like unhappy about it. <laughs> he's like, "All right, girl, what's up?" <laughs> Man. Yeah, she is a little top heavy. Do you understand a what I mean? A little top heavy. <laughs> a little top heavy. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So y'all you might want to be careful when you Google that up, but <laughs> yeah, yeah so, she's um Yeah. Yeah, she was uh, They weren't in a hurry to get her off the field no, either. They're like, no. hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. What's your name is? <laughs> and she had some short shorts on. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's George Brett, and he's like, "Okay, come on, <laughs> come on." <laughs> so, so, all right, then. Rob has been educated on some baseball history. I mean, she was well known. I'm telling you, when I was a kid, I didn't. We had to listen to the game. I didn't get to watch it. So, nah. 
See, and that's the thing these kids these days. I mean, I remember, you know, again, it was like football. There was like one game on a week, wasn't there? Maybe two baseball games on a week. And I remember listening to the St. Louis Cardinals, the Kansas City Royals on the old AM dial on the radio in the house. And we're not that old, Rob. Oh, there's a picture of her in a swimsuit. You better just keep on scrolling right there. I'm telling you, that ain't. Uh oh, wait up. No, no, I'm done. All right, get off there. So y'all don't have to send, but matter of fact, yeah, send Rob a bunch of pictures do tomorrow it. on don't his Twitter account, <laughs> Morgana, yeah. the kissing bandit, send him some love. Maybe we can get Morgana to send him a picture or slide into his DMS. I wouldn't mind a little <laughs> signed picture, you know, <laughs> just saying, you know, with clothes on, with, of uh, course. With clothes on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure. I don't need to be looking at that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know Anyway, uh, let's get back on to a little bit of Sooner football. Uh, usually, <laughs> you might want to go ahead and just back up there about 20 yeah. minutes and just cut all that <laughs> <Yeah>. out. <laughs> now, um, usually this week, on two, we're recording early. We usually record on Wednesday nights, drop it on Thursday, but we're recording on Tuesday, drop it on Wednesday, because usually where are we at on Tuesday nights, Rob? Louis. No. no. Coach's show. Yeah, at Rudy's Barbecue. Okay. Do you remember last year after the Texas loss? Yeah. Do you remember how many people were at Rudy? About half. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how many people you think will be at Rudy's next Tuesday night? Mm. I'm going to go with over half. Over half? So but basically, not what it's been. No, because I'm telling you, folks, it's been packed all year long, has it not? I mean, it has, you know, so you remember when we were talking about bandwagon fans, mm-hmm. is that now what you would call a bandwagon? Somebody, some, that, some of them, that or are they just mad and they don't want to come? Yeah. They don't want to come because we've become known there. The, the ladies save us a spot. Yeah. T row talks to us. Yeah. T row talks to us. And, um, you know, uh, coach always gives us a thumbs up. No, that's a lie, but it sounded good. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, we're part of the regular crowd, I think, you know. Oh, absolutely. And, but there's a lot of people that are there for the autographs because that autograph line gets long, okay. But last year after the Texas game, poof, it was, it literally, it was almost a ghost town. And when, when you look at how packed it is and when, you know, it's not like it's empty when I say it's like a ghost town, but compared to what it's like. Yeah. So you think there'll be half the amount of people will be like yeah. a ghost town? Well, you know, which is sad because, well, actually, it's good for me because, yeah. <laughs> you know, my oldest son, uh, he's like, hey, dad, do you got any uh, memorabilia? He's got a, a physical therapist that he wants, that's a big Sooners fan, and he wants to give him something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I've got, you know, you remember those playboards that I dug out of the trash yeah. that they used on the sidelines yep. that have all the different. So I had one left over, and I said, yeah, I'll give you this playboard if you take it to Rudy's on tuesday the coach will sign it and then you know you can give him that and you can hang it up in the office or whatever he's like oh that's great it's great so anyway there's no coach show you know obviously tonight but next week i think my old son's gonna come yeah. and get that playboard signed and uh give it to his yeah. physical therapist but, so the line won't be as long yeah so. um but it, it, it it's it's interesting and it was kind of light the next week until oklahoma started the confidence in the fan base got back after the tight, you know, and then it started cr- crowding back up again. Yeah. Uh, but that's how Sooner fans have always been. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, you don't, you, uh, um, but I hope it's packed, but if it's not, Hey, but, uh, confidence in this team moving forward, Rob, what's your Iowa state's going to be the game. We'll, we'll go into more of it. Iowa state's always kind of been a little bit of a thorn in Lincoln's side. They came into Norman, knocked us off couple years ago well it's kind of funny because we had so much confidence in both the offense and the defense this year so how long did it take you to lose every drop of confidence in the defense during the kansas state game <laughs> uh, i'm gonna say in the third quarter there i was like they, they can't stop these guys so it didn't take me that long. <laughs> really, I mean, it, like it, it was, was gone. It was I mean, I, I was still waiting on Oklahoma. What 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 frustrated me in the third quarter was our offense went out there and just. I mean, you know, I mean, they ran six plays, six snaps, six snaps, and it was like they looked like they were half speed. You know what I mean? It I was kind of like, uh, uh, and then it's like, okay, the defense, 
You know, they got all the momentum, and then it was like, we're not going to be able to stop these guys. No way. That's, I mean, I, I had no confidence yeah. that we were going to be able to stop them ever. And then when we got into the fourth quarter, when it was, what, 45 to 23 at one point, um, I thought we are going to get blown out because our defense can't stop them. And our offense hasn't done anything, and then the offense made a run at them. We got a couple – you so so stops. Well, but. you know, I had hope that we just weren't playing and we didn't have them figured out, and that you know the stars were lying and we'd figure them out and you know shut them out. Back. Yeah, but then when it was forty eight to you know seven or whatever it was, I was like, <laughs> oh, this is over. I almost stopped watching it. I mean, Caleb Honestly. was trying to get me to turn it off because I, I was no. growling. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm going to sit here. But I did. Like I said, I walked around. I had the TV on the patio on, you know, and I would go outside. And I would walk around my backyard just with the volume up, just listening, you know, and it was, you know, we went from being, you know, two weeks ago talking on the podcast, but it's amazing being at the games and hearing the, you know, that's a gain of eight for Oklahoma, you know, a gain of 12, <laughs> game of 15, a gain of eight. And now I'm sitting there going, it's freaking Kansas State doing this to us. Every yeah. time they touch the ball, they got five, six, seven yards. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and during the comeback, what did you say? <laughs> we said i said yeah they need to score fast and I, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you might not want to repeat it uh, you had me laughing i was yeah. like okay yeah that's yeah. that's fast yeah, <laughs> yeah rob I, I will clean it up uh <laughs> rob uh rob sent me a text that said that we uh, we need to score fast and i responded back yes uh like um rabbit breeding fast how about that <laughs> i was like yeah yeah that, that's pretty quick <laughs> so if you've never seen rabbits breed just google it up and you'll understand what i mean <laughs> but yeah yeah it was like yeah we had and the and the offense did the offense clicked in the fourth quarter it was just too much of a deficit to overcome i mean and you Gee, where have we seen that before? Yeah, I mean, you want to say that championship teams overcome that deficit and win. Yeah, and they do. And they do, and we couldn't overcome it. We, we could, And we couldn't overcome it. So are, are, are we going to are we gonna settle now? We're going to have to settle for a Big 12 championship and a bowl game. What are we thinking? We got Iowa State coming up, uh, then at – Baylor, TCU here, and at Oklahoma State. Yeah. I don't want to sound like a Debbie Downer, but I think um, I think the most we can hope for now is a Big Twelve championship and then a Big Six bowl. Yeah, I don't I don't think the playoffs are in our. You know, and I, I've I've listened to a lot of people on the radio locally here, and they tell me, you know, we're not out of it yet. You know, mathematically, well. <laughs> Yeah, you you got a mathematical chance of surviving if you jump out of an airplane at 14,000 feet, but you're not going to do it. Do you, though? <laughs> I mean, I got to think that's maybe at zero. Well, there is. There is a mathematical chance. People okay. have done it. Okay. okay. But, of course, never mind. I was going to say something really bad. <laughs> you ever have those pop thoughts that pop in your head and you actually grab it before it comes out of your mouth? <laughs> I just did that. I don't have that ability, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something bad. Anyway, um, I mean, l look at what has to happen this year. Uh, Oklahoma lost to Texas, okay? That was two weeks ago in the season. They lost to Iowa State. That was four weeks ago in the season, okay? But the last two years. Right. Oklahoma had a strong non-conference win two years ago with Ohio State, a real strong uh, non-conference win. Um, who did we beat last year? We beat Army and UCF, UCF and UCLA. Yep. And then we had to come back and beat Texas. Okay. Army ended up being a ranked team towards the end of the year, so that helped us. But there was a lot of teams that faltered at the end. Yeah. Well, and, and it's going to happen again this year. That's what that's what you got to hope for. And that's what's frustrating is that I want I want to. <laughs> I want to be that team at some point in time soon that, you know, if we lose at the end of the year, if we don't win our conference, we're still going to get there. <laughs> you know, Alabama. Alabama, <laughs> yeah. Georgia. Yeah. If they lose to LSU, they're still going to make it. Yeah, I mean, that's already the prediction. It's either going to be LSU or Alabama. Or both. 
you know, uh, you know, just just depends on where they're you know where they're going to be at. You know, one or four. You know, flip flop them. There's both of them are going to make it. Right. So, but it's going to be a tougher tougher for them this year because I think there's going to be more undefeated. I don't think anybody's going to beat Ohio State, and um, so that's Clemson going to be, probably won't lose. Be, They've Clemson, had Ohio their State. So Clemson had their annual slip up and survived it just like they did last year. Mm-hmm. So they survived their annual slip up. Oklahoma just hasn't survived their annual slip right. up. Right. Um. Oh, let's see. Ohio State will probably run the table, which means Penn State's going to lose. Um, Utah and I think we'll eventually pass Oregon. I think I, I think we're going to be that five or six team this year. I, I don't I know. Mean, Oregon's got better better wins and losses than we do. I think Oregon could still lose this year. That I mean, may, they that they got to go to um, Los Angeles this weekend. Um, and USC has shown up for a few games, you know, not, yeah. not very many. Well, and a lot of it, I think but, might come down to how bad either Alabama or LSU beats one or the other. Yeah. But you know, if LSU just runs Alabama out of the field, then they may not make it. Right. And, but I mean, I, I think Oregon's resume is worse than ours. I mean, the PAC 12 is terrible. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, the big 12 is not a whole yeah, lot of these, you know, but. So. You know, I mean, their their signature loss was at the beginning of the year to an Auburn team that may be a two loss team. So is that going to end up being a good loss for them? I don't know. I don't know. So Kansas State's a two loss team, but there is just too much stuff I think that has to happen for Oklahoma to overcome it. Yeah. Oh, and, I agree. Yeah. You know, too much. Too many one loss teams. I think are going to look better than us. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we talked about either Alabama or LSU. They're, either one of them are going to look better than we do at a one loss. Yeah. Um, Oregon probably, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I, I I think we're going to end up, in, you know, after it's all said and done, if we run the table, and, and I'm getting worried about running the table, to be honest oh, with absolutely. you. absolutely. I mean, the Baylor game is starting to, you know, me. And then, and, and then again, you know, Oklahoma State, you know, even though I hate them and everything else, they keep, you know, poking their heads out like, oh, we're kind of good again. And then, you know, what the hell? Did you see Gundy brought his dog to the press nah, conference? I didn't watch anything. <laughs> so, but anyway, you know, I, the Baylor games, honestly, the only, well, hell, what game doesn't scare you? TCU knocks off Texas. Okay. Iowa State and Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma State play a good one. Iowa State, I mean. They are formidable. They're formidable, yeah. They're, Not to mention the game's at 7 p.m. kickoff, and it's going to be cold. Yeah. So, Iowa State's more in tune to the cold weather than we are, yeah. probably. Um, Baylor. Baylor's probably going to be undefeated. Probably. When we play them, and we're going to play them in Baylor. Okay, in Wacko. Yep. Um, and then we got Oklahoma State in Stillwater. So, I mean, in, in a stretch of games that we were going, oh, my God, that Baylor game's going, we get past it, we're we're there. Now we're all sitting here going, holy crap. We could lose three of them. <laughs> we could lose three of them. We could lose four of them. Yep. What, would, what would people do if we lost the, lot, lot, the next four games? Holy. Remember how the first season I said Lincoln could get on the hot seat if something like that happened? <laughs> Tell me. Yeah. I mean, there are people already ticked off, you know, a bad play calling. And I'm kind of on that boat. I mean, sometimes – he just gets to me. It gets a little bit too cute sometimes. Yeah, I agree. But let me ask you this: Do you think he's the best offensive coach in the yes, nation? I do. All right, then he's allowed. Yeah, he's allowed to have one. But see, you know, here's we the, didn't do that. So this well. is a that one. I go back to one of the Bob Stoops sayings. Okay, Bob Stoops. I believe it was him that said, but I've heard it more than once. Is that like when Oklahoma play? You know, played in the two thousands. Okay, in, you know, in the championship run, they ran gimmick plays. You ran gimmick plays because you really weren't better than the teams that you were playing. You needed to do something to get that upper hand, and that's yeah. what the you know. Remember back in the day, Bob yeah. would run the fake punts, the fake field goals, the thirty two screw screw you reverse, all that stuff. And, but it wasn't all the time. It was just, and it was just something that separated. You know what I mean? It was the fake field goal when you didn't expect it. And it, I've always felt like you ran that gimmick play when you, when you weren't the better team and you got up on them and you needed to have that killer shot. You know what I mean? Knock them out. Well, we don't need that now. Yeah, we don't. I mean, well, maybe, 
do you know if we you know, we do if we don't run that double re- or that reverse pass there's not an interception the game doesn't turn because that's where the game turned I it mean, is yeah we give it to kenny brooks there and he runs for 10 yards then we line up and yeah. do it all over again and we go down and score and now yeah. we're ahead and blah 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 but instead we we put it in you know who would you rather have throw that pass well, Jalen, J- yeah. <laughs> so, why are we putting it in a guy's hand that's not our passer? That's my point. You know what I mean? Yep. Let, let's 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 keep the ball from flying in the air, except for the guy who's supposed to fly it through. Do you got a date tonight? Maybe. You've been eating them lifesavers like. <laughs> I like them. <laughs> it was like the third lifesaver. I think are you fixing to go meet a. Well, you you never can be Morgana. too prepared, Terry. <laughs> you never can be too prepared. Did Gotta you, have that fresh breath. Did you, did you DM Morgana while you were? No, but I would. <laughs> so, but I, again, would um don't have a guy whose not job it is to throw the ball, throw the ball. You know. I well, mean, it looked like the pass was good, but it also it looked like. He threw it really hard. That's what a lot of people have been saying. You know, it looked like he was a outfielder throwing it, one hopping it to well. And home if you're plate. if you're used to Jalen Hurts, however he throws yeah. it, and then that comes at you, you know, too hard. Yeah, you're gonna yeah, you know. But again, you know, okay. Now, let, now let's get on to the point about six carries. Now, you know, for the uh, running backs, three and three, three and three, three and three. Now, I get that we were behind, okay, but it and seemed – got us out of our rhythm and our game plan. But it seemed like Lincoln just – I mean, even beforehand abandoned it. And it was, was there something that they were doing that he was like, I'm not going to run into it, or maybe he didn't feel like their backs had it that day. I, You have two – Two guys that are averaging that many yards a carry. Why are why are we not getting? Why did we not get them the ball more? And what's frustrating is that we look. Is Lincoln relying on a quarterback running game more than he's relying on that? And is that take has that taken the effectiveness out of his team out of his offense this well, year? Well, maybe. But when you like the the commentator said, we are not built to come back from behind. No the way we run the ball and as balanced as we are. So once we get behind, now we've got to try and speed things up because we don't have time to run the right. normal offense. So then that puts you in a more of a passing situation, and then they pin their ears back and come after Jalen. So I don't know. It's just kind of a – you know what? It was just kind of a perfect storm for Kansas State. A perfect purple haze flying. It was. They, they played a perfect game. Their game plan was perfect. And all their players played way above their head. Hmm. I mean, I don't. I don't like that explanation, Rob. I know, but <laughs> it makes me feel better, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I don't like being worried about the rest of the season. You know what I mean? I want, I want to celebrate every game. You know, I was talking to to Blinken the other day, and I was like, man, you know, after I was like, it sure does make you know a one loss season sure does make tailgating not as fun. Hmm. You know, because you you really – and, again, that's one of the things I don't like about college football that I like about pro football, okay? One yeah, loss one doesn't and make – done, not, not in the pros. Yeah, not in the – I mean, all I care about was when it comes down, I, I really get in tune with my Steelers, and you know this, when they start putting the deals up and Pittsburgh has to play X, Y, and Z. And believe it or not, as bad as Pittsburgh is – been playing they could still make the playoffs this year they they play like you know um you know and again all these teams are bad the browns the Bengals, and the browns and the Bengals again huh okay <laughs> or, or the no Bengals are really bad it's, it's the browns Bengals, browns and they could literally you they mat they mathematically have a chance to get back in it because they have to win the rest of their games and by them winning, other teams are losing. That's what I like about pro. That's what I like about the pro playoffs. When when you get down and it's the divisional runs, everybody's making the run at their divisions, and you go, okay, now's when these games matter. And even if you do lose one of those, well, guess what? You're still mathematically in it because somebody might lose two. In college football, if you, pretty much when you lose one game, 
you're done. You're done. You're sitting back going. Unless you're in the SEC. Yeah. What what all these other things have to happen. That's why I am a proponent for this. I don't know if it's an eight team, a 16 team. I am a proponent for conference divisions, division champions, playing conference, playing, playing each other for the conference championships, into a regional, into a quarter, into a semi, and into a final. Then you would have no ifs, ands, or buts. Win your division. I just don't think we got time to play all that, that many games. Uh, yeah, we do. The pro, I mean, we're already playing 15. I mean, you know what? Make the conference, you know, if you, everybody says, well, that does away with non con Okay, well, then make the conferences all smaller, you know. Ten-team divisions, you can play 12 games. And then, you know, get all get all the teams. We don't need 130 teams in college football, in Division One football, do we? Well, so you're going to just take it away from some colleges <laughs> just because – do what we did with 6A football in Oklahoma. You know, 6A1, 6A2. You know, Division 1, Division 1A, Division 1B. And then you have your FCA, you know, give them something to play for. Maybe. You know, people will the people that support Akron will still support Akron. <laughs> Maybe. Could you imagine being a fan of that team? <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I mean there are so many Minus, me, nothing means anything. I mean, we got we're, we're playing Illinois State in two years now. That was announced today. Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. All these Division One schools take half of them out of the mix and go. You know what? You're Division One A. You're going to do just like you know the FCS teams do now, not the FBI. The F, you're going to have a you're going to have your own title. You know, you're not making any money anyway. You're making money by going and playing the big boys once a year and getting a million dollars. Do y'all's things. We'll give you a, a ESPN2 contract. Your games will still be, still be on TV because I would still watch them if I'm flipping through. There's a football game. And then you have your, your 75 or 60 teams, and you block them puppies off into divisions and have at it. Play a 10-game, you know, a 12-game season, and then have a – you know, whether you have four conferences and eight subdivisions or whatever it is and play it down. They need, they need to get rid of 130 teams. They, it doesn't need to be that big, <laughs> but this is what I, that's what I like about the pro playoff system. You're not, how many, I mean, yeah, the last two years we made it, but how many times did we sit around and want to hang ourselves after Oklahoma got beat by Iowa State? I can't believe we got beat by Iowa State. We're not going to make the playoffs. Blah, 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 blah. And then you got to rely on nine hundred different things to happen. See, I want to play. I want our non-conference to be Ohio State, LSU, and UCLA. <laughs> I would like that too. I mean, seriously, yeah. Is that murder? Yeah, yeah. But you know, you come through that, you're gonna win. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. who, yeah. And who? What kids not gonna go? Okay, they. You know, and I think Oklahoma already does have that reputation of they're not afraid. You just said we're playing Illinois State. Well, that's. <laughs> But we're you know we have Tennessee the next two years Army next year uh, Nebraska Nebraska and I think in twenty twenty three um, that that's our you know beginning of the year sleeper scrimmage game which I hate I mean we shouldn't we shouldn't I mean we I would I would rather you know why not schedule Arkansas they're terrible beat their ass you know what I mean go go yeah and it's just right there yeah go, go, go to the SEC and th- go we'll take the any one of you bottom half well you know why we're or the scheduling, big 10 you know why we're scheduling a ucla don't you because we want to recruit out of california yeah. so yeah. yeah absolutely we're not gonna recruit out of arkansas <laughs> so <laughs> but would you rather play arkansas or illinois state arkansas yeah you know that's what i'm saying go go to the sec the big 10 and go you know hey purdue boilermakers yeah come on I'm going to schedule it's them a better, and Dame and It's a bigger marquee game than Illinois State. Yeah. You know, and – but anyway, there, there's my soapbox on the, on the college playoff, <laughs> which is why I'll be arguing that for the rest of the year. So let's just uh, – let's talk then about – because we started with kind of what, what's next for the Sooners and we're, you know, Big 12 championship. If we make a Big 6 bowl, it's going to be against um, – SEC number two or three, yep. right? Yeah. So it'll be LSU, Alabama, or Georgia. If if the Big Twelve wins 
who, the winner of the Big 12, who is not the highest ranked Big 12 team that not in the playoffs. So if we win the Big 12, we go to the, and we don't make the playoffs. We're in the Sugar Bowl against the highest ranked SEC team. And you know who they're going to want that to be, don't you? Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> they, I, I promise you, the nation wants to see a Hurts. Yeah. To a I would matchup. rather it go the other way that they move us into the playoff and play Alabama in the playoff. That would be the bigger key. But you're right, the Oklahoma. That's and and I agree with you on that. And Kayla's made that point. That's an outside sort because money matters. I don't give a damn what they say in this deal. When they're sitting there looking at these matchups, they're going, "Geez, guys, Oklahoma has lost two, but we, you know." Everybody wanted to see Tua. Don't, and, don't saddle us with another loss. You know, <laughs> you know. Everybody wanted to see Tua and. Uh, oh, you mean two? Okay. Yeah, Remember Tua that. and uh, Murray last year. You know, they wanted to see that. So there. Now, if Alabama loses, that throws that deal over. Hey, we'd rather put Alabama. You know, we we won't put two SEC teams in there. We'll put Alabama in the Sugar Bowl against Oklahoma. That way, everybody gets to see that matchup. And it's a big game. Yeah. It, it would actually probably be watched as much or more than any yeah. of the playoffs. Yeah. So because mo- everybody's going to want to see that. Yeah, because I don't care what anybody says. Money matters and teams that teams that sell. I mean, Oklahoma is a brand that sells. You know, I mean, you. It, it, it's just a brand. I mean, the Oklahoma-Texas game was the, has been the highest – rated game on any network yeah, so but far this year. Alabama's got to be right there. So in Oklahoma, Alabama would be one of your top two, top, top four, mm-hmm. right? Because Ohio State, Oklahoma, Alabama, who, who would be the fourth one? Clemson. Clemson. Yeah. Well, they're new money, though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As Blinken would say. I'm talking about of the Blue Bloods, Oklahoma and Alabama. I mean, people would watch that game all yeah. across oh, the yeah. nation. Oh, yeah. I mean, every time they played, they what they watched it last year, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I I I don't want it to be in the Sugar Bowl, you know. But that you're probably right. That's I, it's just hard for me to to find a scenario. And, and again, I'm no genius of this, but mapping out what all has to happen, it just looks like there's too much has to happen, and then Oklahoma has to be perfect. And you're right. Yeah, we got to play perfect. We got to be convincing. We if even if we go undefeated, if we don't smack people around, that was going to be my. Well, I was going to come right back with us. that. Yeah, if if we win the next four games, forty five to forty four, forty five to thirty eight, that's not going to be convincing. Now, if we win the next four games, forty five to twenty, forty five to twenty four, forty five to fourteen. That's some butt kickings, you know. That's what they're going to. Yeah, go, but okay. still, even if, even at that, I think our chances are slim. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's still slim. Then. Yeah. I mean, still slim, even if we smack people around. Yeah, it, it's still slim. So we're looking at, you know, do you want to go to Louisiana and watch the Sugar Bowl? Whoa. Not really. <laughs> Not if it's against LSU, because I cannot stand those fans. <laughs> Worst fans on the planet. Yeah. Worse so, than Aggies. Yeah. So. I'll probably just watch that one here. And that's another thing I wanted to bring up, too. We're like we're becoming like the rock and roll football podcast. You know that, Rob? We are? Yeah, because we got um, Mike from Fever Tree and the guys from Fever Tree Band that listen to us. Oh, yeah. Okay. We got J.D. and Iron Glide. Yep. J.D. listens to us and is a fan of the podcast and more fans of their both of those musics. Then we got um, Harvey, who's part of the OKC DC ACDC tribute band. And now we got John, or is it Johnny? Johnny John, I think is his last name. Johnny, the drummer for Next Halen that listens to the podcast, which is the Van Halen tribute. I cannot wait to go see them. <laughs> and I've seen them. We, we, me and Caleb saw them, and Teresa, we went down to the Tesla concert down in Durant, and they were playing in uh, uh, Gillies, I think it's Gillies, or Billy Bob, whatever it is, the bar inside the casino in there, and they are really good. So it's kind of cool when he messages. It's like, hey, you know, and and you know, I love me some Van. Yeah, so. they they they're uh, um, out out of state right now doing shows, but uh, they got some stuff planned here in Oklahoma. So we're gonna go catch them in in Oklahoma in the next couple of months. Ooh, we should make a big party. Yep, big party. Uh, invite Elvira and. Uh, <laughs> and some of our sooner girl followers. <laughs> I don't want it to be a sausage party. 
Uh, uh, again, once again, at Big Rob <laughs> on, on Twitter. <laughs> Hashtag I do what I want. <laughs> Hashtag he does and says what he won't. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, we've become, you know, kind of the, the, the rock and roll. We got a bunch of rock and roll hey. bands following us. So 80s rock is the best yeah. era of music ever. So, um, but anyway, anything else you want to touch on, Rob? I think we're about hit our limit of complaining are we, are we and griping out? or is there something else you want both guys quit listening to us yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um anyway um we we're working on something for our podcast next week so we'll we'll it may be something pretty cool we're trying to work out with some folks but we will let you know about that but um you know we got another weekend to lick our wounds that's what it sucks too. Is an open weekend after a loss. Oh my god! So we just got to sit there and watch everybody else play while we're like, <sighs> remember last week when we lost to Kansas State? Because <laughs> you know they're going to show it over, oh, over and over. And over. over. And yeah. over. I will not be watching game day this weekend because I don't want to hear all the guys say, you know, we talked, we were saying they better watch out going up there. <laughs> they yeah. all picked us though, so yeah. But we better watch out. So anyway. That's it for the day, guys. Boomer up. Boomer Terry. Thanks for listening to the Sooner Football Fans Podcast. Sooner Football Fans Podcast is hosted by Rob Nixon, Terry Long, and occasionally Caleb Long. It is produced at the beautiful Podcast Palace in Norman, Oklahoma. Follow us on Twitter at, at SoonerFBFans and like our Facebook page at Facebook forward slash Sooner Football Fans. And visit our website at www.soonerfootballfans.com to read our blogs and keep up with our tailgating activities. Boomer Sooner, everyone.